today. Hello, everybody. I'm going to come over here. My name is Corinne Bruning again. Um, I'm with eDemocracy.org. I'm going to have Steve pass around some of our sign-up sheets for our online forums, and that's what I'm going to be presenting on today. We have a network of neighborhood online forums. Um, and so this is what you read about when you signed up for this workshop today, or maybe you're playing hooky from another work workshop. But um, we really work on all of these different pieces with our neighborhood online forums. We want to reach people who don't actually participate on our online forums. Um, we want to reach a diverse community and engage them with these technologies. And then how can we, how can our neighborhoods actually leverage the internet and leverage these forums to make changes in their communities and to connect with each other? So um, I'm going to actually start off with a quick poll here. So how many of you use Twitter? Raise your hands. Wow, that's quite a bit of you. So how many people are on Facebook? I don't know if you've heard of that before. Okay, so keep your hands up if you're on Facebook too much. Okay, there's other people out there like me. Awesome. So I just wanted to do this quick poll so that we can see that the people in this room are using are using these online tools already. And these are some of the tools that you can use to actually work in your community. And it's not that different from what eDemocracy is. So I'm going to start off um, as well with two stories that are really different from each other, things that have actually happened on our forums. So this uh, picture is about this story that happened on our Powderhorn Neighbors Forum. And there was a wheel of cheese. This person um, was a cheese maker, and they wanted to get their cheese to a competition in Seattle. They were out of town. The mail, uh, they lost the cheese in the mail. And then Homeland Security said they can't overnight cheese for some reason. So they, so this person, yeah. So they put up this request on the Powderhorn Forum saying, can anybody get my cheese to Seattle in 12 hours? And somebody said, well, actually, I've been looking for a reason to go to Seattle. I'm an ex-airline employee. Let me get your cheese to Seattle. And so the cheese got there. I really don't know what the outcome of the competition was, if their cheese actually won or not. But the cheese made it there. And neighbors who did not know each other and were not part of each other's networks were able to help each other. Now, that's not a big critical story there, but it's a fun story. But those two people were able to connect. Now I'm going to talk about a different story, and this is how I got connected to eDemocracy.org. This also happened in the Powderhorn Forum. If anybody knows Powderhorn, it's a very active neighborhood. Um, but in November 2011, there, were, uh, there was a sexual attack that happened in the park there. A mother was cross-country skiing with her two kids, and four teenage boys attacked her sexually. She was able to fend them off. She's not a victim. Um, they went to try to attack two other young women, and the police caught them. But the neighborhood was talking about this on the forum. And I actually heard about this incident through the forum. And, and I was hearing people's you know, response, their own personal responses to what had happened in their park. You know, They didn't want to go into the park anymore at night. Now, if you take all the people out of the park at night, what happens to that park and the safety of that park? <laughs> That's not a good reaction, necessarily. So people were able to come together collectively and talk about this issue. They said, we wanted to have a peace vigil. We want to have a vigil so we can come together and say, we're not going to stay in our houses and live in fear only in dealing with this issue. So we had a vigil. The, the woman who was attacked had a friend post her statement on the forum, her, and she was going through a restorative justice act. So she would actually, I read her statement at this vigil of over 400 people from the community. Um, and she basically told the community, this is how you should respond. Think about what was going on in the youth's lives, why they would commit something, commit acts like this. So I, this is just a, a more serious and somber um, um, actual experience that happened on one of her forums of how people were able to connect with each other. I met hundreds of people during this experience. So it, it's been really, really beneficial to the community there. So what are neighbors forums? You might still be asking yourself. It's basically like a listserv to some degree where people are able to have these local conversations, these safe local conversations. They're public places where people share information. Um, they share information about events and they, they ask questions about ideas that they're having like, what's your favorite thing about Longfellow? You know, is it this restaurant? Is it this, um, 
dog park? Is it this thing? People discuss neighborhood issues, and it's actually a two-way dialogue back and forth. So you can ask a question, and someone else can respond. It's not a one-way situation. And, and that's, a, that's a huge thing. If you can ask a question in your neighborhood association, and people can respond back, with, back to you um, without having to fill out a survey, put a stamp on it, send it back in the mail. Like, it's a lot more rapid than that. Um, and the forums are actually facilitated by um, volunteers. We have uh, our steward facilitator, our forum facilitator over here. And they just look at the forum and they make sure that everything is appropriate that people are posting. So nobody's being personally attacked on our forums, that people feel like the conversation is a place for them to have, com a safe place for them to have conversations about what's going on in their area. And that's really important because if anybody, has anybody looked at the bottom of like a Star Tribune article or a <laughs> Press article yep. and, and read what people wrote down there? Wow. Yeah? Has anybody else been disgusted by those nasty comments? Yeah, I have. And, and what happened in the park? It was really, really disgusting what people were saying they should do to those kids. So this is a place where people can have safe, progressive conversations about what's going on in their community. Okay, so this is what it looks like. So you join the forum, but you bring things with you to the forum. It's not just you joining the forum. It's you're bringing your network. So you work at a community organization. You have neighbors that might not be on the forum, and then you join the forum. So you're talking to people in your neighborhood who might be neighbors that live five blocks from you. Um, but your city councilor is probably on the forum. They might not be posting because they might you know, they, they don't want to put themselves out there, but they're probably listening to what you're saying. The press are on the forums. People share information from the, from the forums on Facebook. The park staff's there, the school, the library, the police are there. They're not policing the forums, they're just listening to what you're saying. So they know what they need to do. And then people have in-person conversations. So this is really how we, we talk to those people who, uh, who aren't part of uh, the digital community. You, you talk to your grandma about what's going on. She's probably not going to want to get on Facebook. She's probably not going to want to get on the listener, unless she's a really, really, you know, cool, digitized grandma. They're not all out there, but you're the one who talks to her. You're the one who's a network with your family or your friends. So a lot of you might be from organizations, I'm assuming. So this is how you can use your forum. And we have lots of forums in Minneapolis and St. Paul. So you can post announcements and events and reach hundreds for free. Free marketing tool for you. Please use it. Please sign up. And monitor, oh, you can go back, sorry. And then you can monitor what's going on in the community. You can just listen to what people are posting. And you can understand what's actually going on in the community, what people are, you know, what people are interested in, what they want you to work on. Um, you can connect people to your programs, and you can encourage your members to join us. Like, we're going to encourage you to join us as well. So this is what it looks like in our Minneapolis forums. This is, these are the forums that we have. We have some startup efforts that are going to happen. So our largest forum is in Standish Erickson. We have 941 members there. That is a lot of people. 20% of households. 20% of households. In Powderhorn, we have 861. Um, Longfellow's been growing like crazy, 529. In Peter's Forum um, on, on Seward, we have 679 members. And if you want to talk to us about opening up one in your member or in your neighborhood, um, if you didn't uh, see yours up there, please do. So um, I just wanted to talk really quick about this idea of digital inclusion overall. So at the bottom, you have technology and raw bed broadband access. People need to have computers, yeah? They need to have internet access. That's really big and there's a lot of people working on that. And we can connect you to those people if you need to know about those resources. Um, online and computer school skills, we have people from CTEP here and they work on, on those skills with people. That's really important. Digital literacy, so knowing if a, if a site is safe or not to use, should you put your credit card information on there or not? Not everybody knows that. People need to know that. We, we really see ourselves at the top of this, this pyramid. You know, we need to funnel people up to where, to where they think that they can use these, these tools to actually engage in their communities and empower themselves. 
So I just wanted to say thank you for, for hearing me out here. There's a, a lot more that we do, and we'd love to connect with more people here. Thanks, Kurt. Uh, what we'd like to do now is uh, break into, I believe there are 35 of us in here. Uh, minus the, we, we had six facilitators lined up, expecting a much larger crowd. Um, I think that we can break this into uh, five groups. And uh, what we'd like to do is that, that should bring us somewhere around seven people per table. So if we can kind of do, you know, a table at each corner and one of these middle ones here, and then we'll have uh, a uh, facilitator in each. What we're going to do is we're going to go through uh, five questions, uh, getting your all's ideas and thoughts uh, on this topic. Uh, we're ultimately going to compile all of this and we will make it available if you've given us uh, a way of contacting you directly. We'll get that to you, otherwise it'll be up on my organization's website and the, uh, the IT department's website off of the city's web presence, um, as well as it'll be other places. So um, what we'd like to do is break into those uh, discussion areas. One thing I would mention to you, we have some general ground rules for this brainstorming session. There's a, a sheet in the middle and your facilitator will walk through you, uh, through those with you. One final thing, uh, we want to hear from everybody. We want to give everyone an opportunity to talk to these five areas and anything else that gets brought up. So try to be brief. Brevity is uh, rewarded here because uh, we really want to get as many thoughts and ideas and recommendations from people as possible. So, if you can pick a corner of the room or the center of the room, we'll kind of get you broken up and we'll go forward. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, five, uh, one in and one in the middle. Okay, Seven, all right. Yeah, you have to take a word and a couple markers, I think. Or any other questions? Yeah, I'll leave. Awesome. Yeah, I still do.
Oh, now we're uh, doing the workshops here. Yeah, it needs to be What I'd like to do is, like I said, we kind of, we don't have to stay structured exactly this way, but we, we came up with five areas that we went to. Uh, the areas that I spoke about in the remarks. And we're trying to get a sense from folks of uh, you know, how we can. But here are the questions. So, uh, so we have a first question about how do you see just the need for basic computer and internet access in your neighborhoods and in your communities? Um, the second is uh, what about training needs? Um, how are people getting information? What are the gaps that you're seeing? Uh, and what are your ideas for um, getting more people access to the kinds of capacities that they need? Um, how can neighborhoods and neighborhood organizations leverage the internet for your work? Um, how can we really achieve authentic and diverse community engagement through these different um, technological strategies? And how can we reach residents um, who are not currently participating? in um, digital technology. I mean, what are our ideas for uh, encouraging our neighbors who maybe don't already have access um, to, to jump in and try um, to participate in their communities in this way? Oh, well, there we go. We really want to hear from you. Um, so one of the things that I forgot about, so we need to also just remember how many people might have access, but only for an hour a day. And as we increasingly move things online, they need to get that stuff done in that hour a day. That's not at their home. Absolutely. Yes. And access that's quick enough to, to make a difference. I think you guys are missing your visual version of that. There you go. Well, I think what you're, I mean, just to encapsulate what I'm hearing you is we have a tendency to use technology towards a population that may not be online to receive it to know. And so, but they might be online and they don't care about the information of it. Right. And so you kind of got to press the flesh. You got to go to the source and uh, tell them about.